Welcome back to the QGIS Road to Nerdvana. This is episode 10, Speed Map Creation, and I'm Tim Sutton. In this episode, I'm going to be walking you through the, the process of creating a map from scratch with no data using open data from uh, OpenStreetMap and uh, from SRTM, the, um, the NASA project to, which maps the, the topography of the world. And um, I'm going to just show you how to quickly put together a uh, project like that. So, um, like I said, I'm starting with a completely blank project and the idea is to make something like this. So I'm going to do one for Kauai in Hawaii and um, uh, produce this basic map, but fetch all the data and produce, you know, a similar looking uh, product for this. We were inspired to do this by looking at um, some of the maps in the, the Flickr QGIS group. Um, you should really browse through these if you want to see some nice things that you can produce with QGIS. So we found this um, example and uh, CLBware from Cartoza and myself, we were, we were using that as a, as a basis for um, just doing some learning on QGIS. Um, so we thought we'd sort of try to replicate it a bit. Um, and that's what I made yesterday, just doing my own take on that. So I'm going to go through the whole process of creating the, lap, uh, the map. I'm going to do it really quickly, as quickly as I can, and um, kind of give you my stream of consciousness while I'm doing things. And um, hopefully you can uh, get some ideas or learn something or give me some ideas about how I could improve things um, from watching what I do. So let's start off by um, I'm going to have two plugins installed before I st start. The one is the quick OSM plugin. Uh, by Etienne Trimile, and uh, this will allow you to download um, OpenStreetMap data into your QGIS session. And the other one is the SRTM plugin by Horst Duster, and this will allow you to uh, download the uh, NASA relief data um, very easily. Okay, so I'm going to start by going and just adding the OpenStreetMap as a base map. Like this and then zooming into uh, Hawaii and then into Kauai. Apologize if I mispronounce the names of these places. It's not my native. Um, it's not my native <laughs> uh, language, so or uh, vocabulary. So I don't really know how to pronounce them well. Um, okay, so I've zoomed in here and I'm going to use the quick OSM tool to go and search for place. And what that will give me back is the boundaries and um, uh, place places of in you know named places in whatever the canvas extent is. So I'm going to run that quickly, and then you'll see it's added a bunch of layers to my project here. And now I can remove this OpenStreetMap base map. I don't need it anymore. And then I want to fetch the SRTM data for this um, area here. So I'm going to just say use the canvas extent and download. And we'll go and fetch that uh, using my NASA uh, Earth data credentials. Okay. And then now I've got some data to work with. I want to. I want to just reproject everything into uh, local UTM zone. So I'm going to use UTM zone 4 north um, because, um, well, there's, there's some local projections I could use as well, but I just kind of picked that one as uh, what I want to use for this demo. So I'm going to set my project to that first. So UTM zone 4 north. Okay, and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a geo package and I'm going to put all the data, all the vector data into the geo package. Um, when I create the geo package, it's going to ask me for, a, for the name of a layer. So I'm going to give it, um, let me just type that, Kauai. I'm going to give it uh, one layer, which I'm going to use for putting labels on the map. So I'm going to make that into a compound curve layer. And I'm going to set the coordinate reference system to that uh, zone 4 north. 
and uh, I'm going to add one field here called name and then say OK. OK, so now I've got a new geo package called Kawaii and I'm going to load this data into um, into the, the geo package here like this. And I don't need the lines, there's nothing really in them. Um, I like this, yeah. Um, right. So now uh, I've brought the lines in. I don't actually need the lines. I want the points. So we bring the points in as well. Okay. Now this data are... That's a bit confusing. I thought I brought that in... Let me just try bring it in again. Sometimes it goes into a different geo package if you don't have the right one selected. So let me just bring that in again. Ah, the problem is that I've got two layers with the name of place, so I need to just uh, rename it here first, like this. And then bring it in now. Okay, there's the place areas, and then um, this one I want to rename this table here. I'm going to call it C, or let's just call it labels. Okay. All right, then these are in a different coordinate reference system, these two, so I want to just reproject them to different coordinate reference systems. So I'm going to add them back to the map. Oh, let me just delete let me just delete everything so that it's clear which ones are which. Add them back to the map. Okay, and then I'm going to do just a reproject. Alright, so now I can choose the place area. I'll tell it I want to put it into that same coordinate reference system. I run it and then um, I can drag and drop that into the database. I can delete this one and I'll just rename this back to uh, co uh, place area. Place area. Okay, and I'll do the same workflow with the places. Sorry, I just want to select that one there. Um, I just like to keep everything very tidy while I'm working so that I know exactly what's going on. So there's my reprojected place area. Um, I select this layer here, use the reproject tool. Place is going to be in UTM zone 4. It creates a temporary layer. I put this one into here. And I'm going to call this one place points. Okay, and then I'll get rid of these two that were, um, oh, this one that's not needed anymore. Okay, so we've got three layers, the labels, the place area, and the place points, and they should all be in the correct coordinate reference system, so I can quickly just check that. So if you go to look in any of the layers, you can see whether the, the coordinate reference system is the correct one. You can see they're all in zone 4. Now the rasters I'm going to deal with quickly as well. I want to turn these into a seamless data set. So I'm going to use the VRT here 
to build a, a virtual raster and you need to make sure to uncheck this option here otherwise each uh, part of the raster gets uh, each separate image file gets put into a separate band in the raster and uh, we just run that and that made a VRT and then um, let's just hide these things away to see how it looks okay so that's our virtual raster we can actually remove these ones because we don't need them all right and then I want to turn this virtual raster into a permanent file so I want to say um, uh, I want to reproject it on the in the on the way as well so let's go here and we're going to say and save it out to UTN zone 4 we're going to put it in our project directory we're going to call it SRTM and uh, I want to set the no data to zero okay let's run that you can see it's busy exporting the data now All right, so the new product that's made is going to be a single TIFF file. Um, you'll see that there's a few little holes in there. We could go and do a sync fill with, uh, with uh, GDAL, but I'm not going to try to do that uh, right now. Um, well, we could do this one over here, something like that. But uh, like I said, I'm not going to try to fiddle with that right now because it's not my main objective. Now, this one, I could actually try to drag and drop that in there. Let's see if it will let me do that. Okay, so now we've got the raster in the geo package as well, which is nice. So I can get rid of this one here. Drop that in like that. I'm just going to go into my file system here and just actually tidy up this. All right, so I've got a nice uh, single database with all the data layers that I want to use. And then I can start to do a little bit of styling. So um, let's put that in the right order there. First thing I'm going to do is just name the layers nicely. So this one I'll call relief. I'm going to make another copy of this layer as well, and I'll explain why now. This one I'm going to call to um, I'll call it shade heel shade um, heel shade. Okay, and then this one we're going to call it um, uh, Island. This one we're going to rename to Places. And this one we rename to Labels, but with a capital E, uh, capital L. Okay, now this Islands layer has um, got some buffer boundary around each island, which I don't want to have in my data so I'm just going to go here and do a quick edit to this data set and then I'm going to invert the selection like this and just delete everything that's not one of those three polygons and then save that right and then um, let me style up these layers quickly so I'm going to go over here for the bottom one I'm going to set it to use the hill shade renderer and maybe with some z factor here of 1.5 like that something like that um to actually see that we've got to turn off a couple of layers again okay so now we can see we've made like a shaded relief model of the elevation data and above that i want to put um oh sorry we've made a hill shade model and i want to make a color shaded relief so i'm going to go here and set this to pseudo color and I'm using a color ramp from that I've downloaded from the QGIS 
uh, plugin site which is called Elevation 2 and um, I'm going to set the mode here to equal interval and put 10 intervals um, see why did it make that all white at the end there uh, let's go in here let's just make that like that okay there we go. So we've got some nice looking uh, relief there. And I want to actually make that um, hill shade shine through this a bit. So I'm going to go to the blending mode here and I'm going to choose multiply. And then the underlying hill shade comes through, but it also gets the color from the layer above it. Now, I haven't saved my project yet. It's always a good idea to save your project. I'm going to save the project into the geo package so everything's together in the one place. So we put it into there, let me call this like that. Okay, so we've got the relief um, cartography done. Now I'm going to make, um, I want to make like a blue uh, sea and a nice like um, fuzzy boundary around the edge of the island. So I'm going to use the inverted polygon renderer here and that will basically draw outside of where, wherever there is something on the ins, uh, in the on the islands uh, and then i'm going to use over here i'm going to use the shape burst renderer shape burst fill and for the colors i'm going to choose a nice blue color here like this um a little bit lighter like that for the one and then we're going to go to transparent at the other end like that and then I'm going to add another symbol layer and the symbol layer I'll put to the bottom and I'm going to make it the same color as this color here um, and then maybe just a little bit a little bit darker. Let's go like this. I wanted to reduce the size of this um, shape burst over here. To use a set distance, I'm going to use like 12. Okay, and then actually go back to here. Paste that back in. There we go. So that looks quite nice for the for the islands. We could certainly play around with that some more to make it look even nicer. Um, and I want to put some labels on here. So I would like to have like a nice arched label saying Pacific Ocean, and then maybe some lines underneath here with the names of these islands. If I just pull in again that X Y Z uh, tile map for um, Open Street Map quickly, I can just get the names. Uh, that looks like it's called Niao. Nihao. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. And let's see what's the name of the other one here. Okay, it's got no island, uh, no name listed. On. So I'm going to make some labels for these two islands. Um, but I'm going to. I'm going to um, do them the labels off the island so that they um, kind of go one over here and one over here maybe and then we're going to have Pacific Ocean written across here. So I'll just keep that off for now. I'm going to go to here. I'm going to edit this, add a new layer and then I'm going to put in a um, curve here like this. Let's go like this. Uh, 
Um, we're going to call that the Pacific Ocean. I'm actually going to just move this over a bit. I don't think it's in the best spot there. So we're going to grab that. Maybe put it like that. Uh, so that's the one label. And then another one is going to be Kauai over here. So again, I'll go capture a new curve. Um, whoops, I forgot to put it, do this one here. And this one is Kauai. I believe it's like that. What do I think about my U's and A's mixed up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's correct. And one more for here. Now, I've got a five second goldfish memory, so I can't remember the name. It's Ni Ihao. Okay. So, um, I put one more of these here like this. I hope I got that right. Yeah, it looks okay. Right, so those are going to be our labels. So we can actually get rid of this open street map one again here. And then let's put some the labels, uh, let's enable them so we can actually see them. So we just go to here, labeling, we tell it to use the name column. You can see the labels are already appearing. But I want them to be kind of nice and flowing across those lines. So um, we're going to tell it to do curved and we'll go here and choose a nice font. Uh, something that's sort of a little bit italicized. Maybe like this one here, and we'll just crank up the font size of it. Okay, so I actually want this font and this font and this font to be different. I want like this one to be really big, and then this one to be these two to be a bit smaller. So, what I think I'm going to do is just quickly go back to my labels layer here, add a new column for it, which is called font size. Just say, um, create a new field, font size, uh, it's a whole number, and we'll default it to, what did I set that to now, 32. Okay, that adds a new column called font size there, and then these two I'm just going to change them down to maybe 16 each like that um, and then I, over here I can go uh, and tell it to instead of just using the literal font size I'll tell it to use that field there all right and so that will bring those font sizes down a bit nice now I don't like that white I could also data drive all of the uh, I don't like that black I want to make it white so I could also data define all of these and I think this one is a bit close to the island so I'm just going to make a last tweak here just to go and move that maybe just out over there something like that uh, maybe this one could come a bit closer to the scene yeah uh, and then I want to just lastly make the geometries for these uh, for this labels layer invisible so I just say basically no symbol there and then you can just see the labels without any of the geometry associated with it. Alright, so um, 
there's obviously many more things I could do to the map, but I want to kind of just use that as a starting point. Um, and then I want to switch over to starting the map composition. Like I mentioned, there's little dots here because there's probably some low-lying areas. I'm not going to try to fix those now. What I am going to do is just add the world as a layer on here um, using the little Easter egg in QGIS where you can just type world here. Uh, and I'm going to put this at the bottom and I'm going to make two map themes. Uh, I might even just make two groups as well. I'll just call this um, um, islands. And I'm going to make another group called world. All right, and these ones I'll drop into here. And this one I'll drop into there, just to keep my, my project quite organized. And then I'm going to make a map theme where this is off and those are on. So that will be map theme islands. Um, islands map theme. You don't need to put the word map theme in normally, but I'm just going to do it just so that it's clear later when you look at the user interface on the composer where things come from. And then I'm going to invert what's uh, enabled and disabled here. And I'm going to call this one world map theme. Um, world map theme. Okay, so now I've got two map themes. And this world one I'm going to be using uh, to put a little overview map. Like if you remember the picture I showed you, I want to use it for this over here. I'll just set some styling for this as well. I'm going to make it like a bit of a gray fill. Uh, no transparency and no outline. Okay, and I just replace. The, I don't actually think I need to replace it, but just. Okay, and we switch back to our islands theme. All right, let's go and make a map composition now. So I'm going to go here to create a new map composer. I'm going to call this Kauai A3 Landscape. Uh, just so that I, if I've got multiple map, theme, uh, map compositions, I know which one's which. And the first thing I'm going to do here is go to the page properties and set this to A3 as well, just to match my name that I gave it and then uh, I'm going to sort of zoom to the page <coughs> and we can start adding some map elements to the page. So I want to put a map um, first for the, um, the overview map and then I'm going to put another map for the full map. I'm going to set this one to the back All right, and then um, for this one, I'm going to set the map theme to my world theme. For this one, I'm going to set the map theme to my islands theme. And then the world theme one, I'm going to tell it to zoom to the whole um, to the whole map. Um, I'll just do it interactively like this. Okay, it's looking a bit strange now, but don't worry about that because we're going to change the, the coordinate reference system for this map uh, to not use the project one, but we're going to use an orthographic projection. So we might have to go and create that projection quickly. Let's just have a look. Um, okay, we're going to go create it quickly. So that's just a little side detour that we're going to make so that we can have basically that globe looking uh, map over here. So we're going to go back to the main user interface. Um, over here. 
and in settings we can have a custom projection defined here so just before we do that like as a shortcut for what I'm about to do I can go to here and just search for orth orthographic um, I'll use the North Pole orthographic and I can copy either the WKT which is the recommended one or the w or the Project 4 which is the less recommended one but it's simpler so it's easier to show you how to edit it here and I'm going to go to here and um, create a custom projection definition so um, what I want to do is I want to center the projection I'll actually just try before I do that I'll just try to see um, how does it look? Let's go back in here. North Pole orthography. We'll just try and see how it looks and then if it looks decent. So you can see that it's sort of um, it's sort of centered on uh, Greenwich Meridian at the moment but what we really want to do is we want to spin this around and maybe also like flip it over a bit so that it centers on uh, where Hawaii is so uh, I'll just save my work like that and go back to here and then go to custom projections we're going to create a new one I'm going to call this North uh, orthographic north um, Hawaii and we put in that project string here now we can start to tweak things so you can see the latitude uh, is 90 which may be okay so we'll keep it like that and then the longitude got to be negative now the trick is working out what the longitude was supposed to be. So I'll put it to like negative. I think it's right around on the side of the uh, on that side on the west. So let's just try that. Um, we can validate it and say OK. And then we go back to our map composer. And we try to use that new one that I've just created. That will be down in your custom coordinate reference systems list. Okay, and we might need to force it to refresh quickly. Um, I honestly can't see any difference yet, so let's just give it a uh, that's I was uh, I was on the wrong map when I did that. Let's go back here. It seemed to have set itself back to what it was before. Let's go like that. Okay, so what are we seeing now? Um, that's Alaska. That's all the islands there. So we want to kind of flip it around a bit more so that this gets tilted over that way. So I'm going to go and manipulate the um, the latitude as well. I think it's it's centered kind of where we want it to be. We just want to flip this whole thing over. So this is just I'm doing this by trial and error, but obviously it could be nicer to do it in a more systematic way. Um, Let's put it on latitude zero. It'll make more sense. Okay. And then we'll go back to the map here. Now I've got to kind of reset its brain, so I'm going to just go to there and then go to that one again. Um, yeah, that's kind of what you want. So Y is in there. 
Um, I'll just zoom out a smidge in here. All right, so we're looking at the vastness of the Pacific, which is fine. Um, I want to just get my zoom a little bit better. Maybe I'll just go like this. It's kind of tricky to do this interactively with my scroll wheel. The, the one takes me to there and the other one takes me to there. But I'm going to look at the scale. So that's it. Uh, I'm just going to crank that up by one more. Uh, four. Okay, that looks good. So we just pan that over a bit. Okay, and I'm going to make the um, box kind of try and shrink the box itself that that's in down a bit. All right. Uh, so it's not exactly clear where, where we are on Earth because we can see Australia, we can see. Um, uh, North America there. I want to put a, a marker on here to show where this area is on this map. So to do that I'm going to tell that to use uh, this as an overview. So um, I just need to get my map, uh, get it the right way around. So this is map Um, this is map one, and this is map two. Now, um, I just want to just check which way around that. I have to remove this one here. So this is an overview for, for um, For map two, I'm going to put in here because it's such a small area. I'm going to change this to use a centroid marker, centroid fill, and that's going to be a marker. Now you can see the dot there. Okay, so I can see my latitude didn't quite work out like I wanted it to. Uh, it actually looks uh, a bit wrong to me. I thought it was down below here, but I could be wrong. So, but I'm going to just finish sorting this out while I'm here, so I'm going to go here, set the strokes out to no line. So you can see I've made a red cross there. I'm, it's a bit small, so I'm going to just crank up the size of that cross a bit. Okay, and it looks like I need to go tweak my my projection parameters again one more time. So let's go do that. So that was on zero. Uh, I'll split the difference and put it to 45 latitude. Okay, we we'll go back here, and then we just got to sort of trigger a redraw. Okay. I hope you followed along with that. It's a little bit complicated, but basically I'm just tweaking the um, the central meridian uh, central meridians for um, that projection so that they more or less uh, set up to show where Alaska is on the map. I just want to change the scale again down a bit too. Ah, this has got reset again. There's a bug, I think, in QGIS. It's like it keeps resetting that CRS to something else. Not sure what's going on there. 
Um, There we go. I still feel like it's put the cross in the wrong place, but I don't know how to fix that right now. I think it should be over here. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Now I want to, but anyway, I'll come and look at that uh, probably offline from this session. Um, I want to make this background of this transparent. So to do that, I can just go here and say no background. And then it obviously becomes a bit hard to read. So what I want to do is make a circle on the map and then use that to fill in, like uh, to create a background effect. So I'm going to go here to catch a, capture a shape and I'm going to create an ellipse like this. Um, now I've got to get one that's exactly uh, circle shaped. And I want it to go one level down beneath the um, beneath the overview map. I'm just going to say lower a bit. Okay, you can see it's still a bit big, so I'm just going to shrink it down a bit. Still a little bit bigger, I just want to shrink it down a smidgen more. Alright, so we're going to get something like that. Like I said, that thing could definitely use some more tweaking. Now, um, I want to also create a bit of a, an effect on this circle in the background. So I'm just going to go and set the style of this. You see that by default it just used like a simple white fill here. But um, I don't need the bound, the border, I don't think, on it. And for the actual color, I think we can take something... Uh, close to what's on the map maybe uh, just a little bit like that and I want to just put an effect of a shadow on it so uh, I'm going to go over here to the draw effects and put an interior um, shadow on it like that and that's a bit heavy so I'm going to just reduce that down a bit like that and then if we put this back on here we get like a nice globe. It's amazing. Uh, just um, your eye suddenly just turns that into a sphere. Or <laughs> well, my eye does. I hope yours yours is doing that too. All right. So that's how I've made like the sphere effect for um, the overview map to show the location of where we are. Looking good. Now I'm going to just do a last few things. I'm going to put a graticule onto the top of this main map here, um, so we can manage that over here in the grids. I'm going to add a new grid um, and then I'm going to go customize that and I'll set these to like um, so we want to use the map CRS so I think I'll use like uh, 50 kilometers let's see how that looks maybe even 25 kilometers How does that look? Okay, and then I want to make those lines um, white. And I actually want to make them like white and even a little bit transparent so that they're not too dominant on the on the map. They just need to be visible without, like your eye should fo focus mainly on the, on the islands and not on that grid. So that's that. And then I also want to have some uh, Maybe some annotations around on those uh, those graticule lines. So we can put in over here, and we can say um, now you can see it's got the coordinates around the edge of the screen, but uh, I want to put them inside of there. I'm just wondering if I want to. Uh, See, those are not degrees so that doesn't make uh, let's see okay so we just do that and it will switch to degrees no 
that's not right. Those are still meters, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. That's actually interesting because let's go like degrees, minutes, second. I don't actually know what it's doing. I guess it's converting that uh, previous number into decimal degrees, even though it's not. So for this grid, we want to have a different coordinate reference system. We want to use, I think, the um, we want to use WGS eighty four four three two six here, and then we'll have to specify this in degrees. So that's going to be zero point. One maybe. That's maybe too much. One two five. Okay, and then the same for the other part here. All right, and then we can uh, maybe that's yeah maybe do it zero fifty like this. Now, um, what I want to do is just go back to the grid here. Degrees, minutes, seconds is fine. I want to put everything on the inside of the frame like this. And I want to make the font for this um, white as well. And maybe we might even run the ones on the side horizontally, I don't know. Uh, but I think we can get rid of a lot of the precision there. I'm just going to make this font a little bit more translucent or transparent. Um, the precision, let's go to here and see. Um, yeah. There's still something. Okay, that is actually the one for the top. So it's just I'm just checking that it's consistent. And then uh, what it's actually doing is got um, latitude and longitude labels at the end of the lines. We want to actually show um, show longitude only on the bottom. Show longitude only on the top. And then show latitude only on the left and show latitude only on the right. There we go, that looks better. Okay, and then we're gonna put in uh, uh, maybe just a title here. I always forget how to spell it. And we're going to make that a big uh, white font as well. And we're going to pump up the font size there. And we'll use that. Um, I'm going to get the same font that I'm using for that one there, which I can't remember what it's called. So I'm just going to go back to here and look. Uh, okay, that's Castle and Old, uh, Castle and Old Face. Okay. Now, um, we can just put some more decorations onto the page. Like that, and I'm going to make this also just um, have a star, which is a white frame with transparent inside. So no full. And the brush for the outside, we can make white.
like that. Um, something still looks a little bit off there. Okay, and then I'm going to just put a little line over here. I'm going to do the same thing with that one here, just give this white. Okay, and then I'm going to put the legend in over here. I only want to see the legend for the um, for the relief, so I'm going to just edit this and get rid of the other bits that I don't care about here. So, um, I'll put that up there. Remove that. Remove that. I don't want to have any background or anything on there, so let's just go. It's funny that the labels are not correct there. I have to go check why that is the case. Um, no background. Let's have a look there. And then. Uh, we're just going to edit this item property here. Take away that. Call it altitude, maybe rather. And we want to set that font to um, to be white as well. And I'd like to use that same font that I used before. To remember the name of the font again. Castlin Old Face. All right, and then um, I think I might just put this like a slightly white background. Um, Instead of having no brush, I'll have it solid, but just have it very, very subtle, um, like that. Um, the altitude is not displaying properly. I'm just going to have a look and see what it's doing over here. Yeah, that is weird. So, it has actually got labels there, so we can just go to here and set these one. Okay, so now we've got labels for those. We can also set the suffix as meters here. That might be nice. I don't know why these ones didn't all get auto-generated labels.
Okay. Right. So now, unfortunately, that legend I made is not auto updating. So if we go back, um, it's actually strange because it set the project <laughs> to that orthographic, which is not what I wanted it to do. I'm just going to go back here, switch that back to like it was. Zoom into there again and just go see if this is still okay in my map. Okay, so this was not set to auto update. If I up auto update it, um, I have to kind of redo some of that work. So not too bad. I can just go delete this again. I believe Q just might be crashing right now. I'll just give it a second before I kill it. Uh, yeah, okay, there it goes. It's crashed. I save a lot, so hopefully you didn't lose too much. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we've got those. That's good. I think we just need to get that open again here. Always save your work as you work. Ah, look, it put the cross in the correct place now. That's... That's much better, I think. Um, and we've got our altitude showing meters there. That's great. Suddenly, miraculously fixed that as well. I don't much like that black around the legend um, item. So I'm going to just see if I can tweak that as well. Um, if I choose this, yeah, what does it do? Let's see, did that make any difference? Not at all. Okay, I think I'm going to try to fix that another time. You should be able to remove the black around those little um, items there. Um, and then maybe we could just copy this little line here. Um, this one here. That like that there. And then I saw a nice um, thing that they did on the original map that I used for the inspiration. Let's see if it's still here. Where they sort of signed the map and they put some extra information about the map scale and the datum and a few other things. So I'm just going to go and like put my name. I won't put all of that stuff in there now, but... Um, Okay, and I'll just center it up. Put that to that same font. I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger. And let's see if we can put a signature in there as well. Uh, I'm just going to go find one quickly. Just bear with me for a second. A 
Okay, so just in the folder that um, that we're working in, I'm just going to put my um, my signature. It's not transparent, so I might have a problem. Let's just see. It's going to look a bit not so great. <laughs> um, if I want that to look great, I'd have to make the whole of the background of this frame match that color. So I'll try that quickly, and if it's not looking great, I'll get rid of the signature. I need to go make a transparent version of my signature for later, for next time. Okay, so we're going to go here and we're going to just change this full. To that. That sort of breaks everything, doesn't it? So I don't think we want to do that. We're going to just get rid of that. Right, and we could add some extra detail in here about the coordinate reference system that we used. Um, And whatever other details we want to put in here. I just want to make sure that it's using the right font. Okay. Um, maybe a north arrow and then we'll kind of wrap it up. I think the placement of this thing could be better. Maybe it would be better across the bottom here, like in this block, um, or taking up a bit less space. Let's see if we can just compact it a bit. And um, yeah, let's lastly just add a north arrow onto the map. It'd be kind of nice to have it over here, I guess. Um, I want to choose something really simple, I think. Something like that. And then again, I'm just going to go and set the stroke color to white. And I'll just put the text north next to it because that doesn't include the word N or the letter N. And there we have it. That's my um, quick high-speed map. Take number two or three, depending on how many how you count. Um, certainly a lot more you could do to improve it, but I hope um, watching this you get some ideas that you could use creating your own maps and maybe learn something, like I said, or maybe you can teach me something that I missed. I welcome your comments and feedback. And I'm just going to end by exporting that so that I can tweet it later and um, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you on the next one. Um, catch you next time.